Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Big Kev Zoo Cooking, part of the Men of Hope Group, sponsored by the uh, Black Swan Health and Uniting Church. Hope you've had a good week. Oh, what are we going to do today? Today's a nice, simple one again. We're going to do a nice cream of mushroom soup with a, a roll, which has got a bit of a twist in it, because uh, the roll is going to be filled with cheese and herbs and with baked, and you'll see what I mean as we go along. So um, let's crack on, it's straight into it. So first thing, get the old, old hands washed. Um, mine are sticky from playing the piano, not, but anyway. So um, oh, quick wash of the hands. I must say it's really nice weather, so maybe summer's on the way, who knows. Right, to start with, I've got my oven on. I've preheated it to uh, 180 degrees. It's been on for a little while. That's going to be for our rolls. Let's have a look what ingredients we've got today. I've got 200 grams of butter. I've got some fresh um, thyme, but it's savoury thyme. You get a savoury and you get a sweet one. Um, I've got nearly a kilo of uh, mushrooms, portobellos, and I've got a couple of Swiss. Um, uh, bread rolls. I'm using the old Campbell's real stock today. You, if you if you don't buy this, you can use a stock cube. It's the same thing, but I like this. It's ready to go and uh, it's really handy. Um, I've got four onions, ready peeled. I've got some hot English mustard, some grated cheese. This uh, this is from Woolworths, so I find this really good. This hill is cheap, and but it's really tasty. Um, I've got 600 mils of thick and cream, and I've got some garlic in a tube today. So, first thing we're going to do is um, this this actual dish doesn't take very long, so um, it's more of a bit of you'll have to have a chat in between while we let this cook. So, let's start with getting the um, ingredients prepped. So. Because we're going to blend this uh, mushroom soup, we're going to use a stick blender, or if you've got a processor, put it in that. We don't need to cut things up too finely. So what we're doing with the onions, we're cutting them in this rough chop. Um, so quarters and then halves again, quarters, you know, just, because the blender will chop them right up. So um, you can use as many onions as you like. I've got four here, so the, a kilo of mushrooms, which will serve probably four people nicely. If you like a bit more onion, fine, you know, uh, you put it in. So there, put those back in the bowl. And uh, that's the onions prepped. Now with the mushrooms, these mushrooms I've already washed. So we're just going to, again, just going to roughly chop them up. Because they're going in the blender, they don't really... Um, don't really need um, that much uh, finesse, which is quite handy. Do you like that word, finesse? Eh? Not commonly used by me and not commonly done by me, but, you know. Um, no, no real news to report. We had, um, I, I wasn't at my uh, Monday morning cook this week. Uh, I wasn't feeling too good, but they uh, had a coffee and cake morning, which seemed to be quite successful. They, Music groups going well. We had a great day down at Clarko Reserve last Friday. Um, so we do support workers. I say it every week. Get hold of Gerard and get your clients coming along because uh, we are getting bigger and bigger. Andy. Oh, hang on, and Bo's Andy. here now. And um, so yeah, it's really uh, really important that you get involved. The music group is is hitting it off really well. Um, and uh, we, we seems to be very popular, not with me, but it's the walking group. Uh, Dave Potter, he, he does that. And uh, they go, they have some lovely walks either down in, uh, I think they go sometimes around the, in the suburbs in a park or they go down the beach. Uh, um, but that seems to be going really well. How are you both? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's very healthy walking. It's good for, good for you. Mental health. Is it? Yeah. What, did you walk o on your head? Oxygen to the brain. Oh, is that what it is? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, so these mushrooms, like I said, we're just roughly chopping. 
Untuk yang berakhir Now that's the mushroom shop. I'm using the wok. Obviously at home you'll probably use the saucepan, but I like my wok as you all know. So I put my wok on to heat. Like I said, I've got 200 grams of butter here. I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to put half in. I know it seems a lot of butter, but the mushrooms absorb the butter. Um, so, but the first bit is to cook the onions and the garlic. Um, so what's new, Belle? Anything? Well, um... How's that lovely dog of yours? Still breathing? I'm trying to do my hazard awareness test. Yes. yes. So I've been doing it online. And it's it's great when I do it online. I'm, I'm really good at it. But when I go to the actual driving centre to do it, I always fail. Is that right? Yeah. Is that, well, oh, I've been there with you. when all the driving instructions run away, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so we've got our butter melting there. Looking good. So now, just break that down a bit more. I'm going to just add my onions. And a roughly uh, a teaspoon, large teaspoon of garlic paste. We had a nice apple crumble yesterday, didn't we? Oh, it was divine. Yeah, I've got a little bit. It was the most beautiful crumble I've ever had. Was it, Damon? Yes, it was gifted. It's his hands on his hands. Amazing. <laughs> anyway, did, so, so, did you give any to your cleaner? No. Take it for me. No, I ate it myself. Oh my god. Anyway, so we've melted, we've broken these onions down. What we're doing, we're just softening them up as usual. Doesn't matter if they do colour, but um I prefer them not to colour. And uh I've just gotta to go to get Mimi off the road. Mimi off the road. Mimi off the road. Mimi's the dog, by the way, people. Lovely, lovely it is. My favourite animal. Here we go, these mushrooms, these onions are really cooking up nicely now. What I'm going to do now is get this time and uh, I'm going to stalks like that. All I'm going to do is run my hand down the stalks, which gets the, the, the flowers off, the, the leaves off. It's just a bit you want, don't really need the stalks. Uh, so easy to do. Time is beautiful when it's fresh. And you can use dried, but the, the fresh is so much better. Um, you get this again in, in the supermarket, In the, they have their little herb section. Uh, but like I said, if you haven't got um, fresh, by all means, um, use dried. You will, you will know the difference. I can smell it really nicely. Give them a bit more of a stir. I'll have to get you some seeds so you can grow your own. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Grow some birds. Don't mix them up with those other seeds you grow stuff with, will you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a great party. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> These onions are a bit more of a stir. See, they're just beginning to get a bit of colour, but um, that's enough. And put the rest of this thyme in. You smell that thyme? Yeah. Oh, you don't smell, smell this. Smell. Anyway, I'm going to put the thyme in now. The right time for the thyme. Yeah. No, maybe I'll just keep the cookie. Cooking away. Yeah. Now I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put some more butter in now. Roughly another oh, 50 grams. 
That's about 200 grams of butter you've had in there now. Melt that through. I love your electric wok. That's new, isn't it? Had it about four weeks now. Uh, I'm going to put the mushrooms in now. Pretty good. You can do it for the, for the viewers. Give those mushrooms a bit of a stir around. Soften them up. Using the, uh, the portobello mushrooms and the Swiss mushrooms, they're a darker colour. So they give us a, a, a more rich, uh, colourful soup. If you use the, uh, the, the white button mushrooms, I mean, they've got the flavour, but they're quite pale. So um, this is really one. Oh, I, I like to use field mushrooms, the black mushrooms. Um, but the, you don't see them that often. When you do, they're quite dear. But um, anyway, so we're just tossing these mushrooms in the, uh, into the butter. So that's what we want to do. I'm just going to put a lid on for a minute just to soften them up a bit more. <coughs> just give it a little clear up. <coughs> I hope you're following some of these uh, cooking lessons and having. I believe I've got a little bit of a following. Some of the black swan stuff followed, so um, that's good. <coughs> Go back to these. Now we've got this um, stock, vegetable stock. It's um, a litre of meat, I believe. Yep. Four cups, one litre. Pour that in. <coughs> smells good. <clears throat> it's a bit of a stir. You can see it there in the mushrooms in the stock. I've got a frog in the throat today. Eight frogs. Mm. Put the lid back on. Mm. And uh, <coughs> we just let that simmer now. So we bring that to the boil. And we'll put that down on a lower heat. All we're doing now is uh, softening the mushrooms. Not a lot, lot to the dish. But while that's happening, <coughs> I'm dying, choking away. We'll concentrate on our rolls. Now, like I said, this has got a little bit of a twist to the roll. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can use a roll. Doesn't matter if it's a few days old. The older, the better. But all we're going to do is cut into the top. Just cut around. until about three quarters, so you've got like a, like a lid. So, so you've got that there and it lifts up like that. In the bowl. And then what we want to do is uh, take the inside out of the roll, take a bit off the top, take the insides out. I, I make these with all sorts of things. That's broken up one, that's all right. I make them with um, the same principle as I'm going to show you now with the cheese. I have put baked beans and sausages and everything. And I, and I used to make them like a breakfast roll. So you'd have an all day breakfast, but in a roll, you could have it hot or you could have it cold. Um, or just do what I often do is just um, cheese, you know, so you've got a cheese roll. So it's two rolls we're going to do. We'll take the stuff in and out of them. <clears throat> so 
So they're actually spread in there now. Bring these mushrooms down. These mushrooms are stir while we're going along. Put the bread in there, and now I'm going to add. A good handful of cheese grated. Probably, probably a little bit more than that because you can always, if you've got some mixture left over, it doesn't matter, put it on some toast or something later or you know, whatever, or in a sauce. So that's two handfuls of cheese. I'm going to put a, um, a teaspoon of um, mild English mustard. You can use whatever mustard you like, but Mild's nice, it's not too hot. Good teaspoon, big, big dump like that. <coughs> Lid back on. Just a little smidgen of garlic, probably just a, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Big teaspoon, that, but there you go. And uh, then we we'll give it a bit of a bit of a mix round. Teaspoon. So if we mix this around, just to get the bread spread through and a bit of the cheese and the mustard. <clears throat> so you put the bread stuffing into the bowl from inside the rolls. Yeah, so this is this, this is yeah, this is the bread we took out the roll. Yeah. The cheese. Yeah. The mustard. Yeah. And the garlic. We just mix it around so okay. so the bread gets mixed in and the and the uh, mustard gets mixed through. Yep. So now some people when they put rolls in the oven they wet them, um, and it makes them crispy on the outside. But these will be fine without that. So. Like I said, the oven's on. We're now going to take our tray and we're going to get our rolls. And all we're going to do is fill the rolls up. And you can see the cheese going in there. You pack it in, get right in the corners. Um, you'd think that just taking the bread out, it would fill it right back up. But Obviously not. It's, it, there's a lot of air in rolls. You know, when bread rises, you get a lot of air. So that goes back in, pushing it in the corners. Oops. One that's got a little bit of a tear in it. Then we just put the lid over. Again, we do the second one. Lift it up. And we stuff it. So simple to do, and yet this is such a lovely way to do it, you know. So you push it in, right into the corners. The more you get in there, the better. Never seen this done before. No? Never seen one of these, no. Oh, well, you know. Live and learn. Only do it for special people. Thank you. Who said do I said to do it for you? Oh. Uh, no, of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's, there you see it. Look, it, it's really stuffed in there. Because when the cheese melts, it'll break down. Don't worry about what you've got in the tray. Because, um, you know, again, it'll just melt. So that's the stuff rolls. I'm going to put those in now. They'll probably take, probably only take 10 minutes. You're only really melting the cheese. Um, so into the oven. That's on. We're on 180 degrees. Nice and warm. Well, that stocks warms up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so let's get ourselves back to this soup. <clears throat> Mushrooms are softening up nicely. Obviously, I'm doing it a lot quicker. Normally, you probably leave this for another 10 minutes or so to get a bit more. But um, now I'm going to get some cream. This is just thick and cream. Um, you can put any cream in, really, but thick and cream is best. Or uh, sometimes I think they mark it as 
in cream sometimes in the shops, you know. So there's 600 mils here. I'm gonna probably put, oh, about half in, just over half. So let's say 400 mils. Stir that through. You can see that there. Um, bring that back up to the boil. <clears throat> To taste it. Mm. Nice, very nice. Even I say so myself. Yeah. So, what we're going to do now is um, <clears throat> just let that simmer. I'm actually going to take it off the heat because I'm going to use the same PowerPoint as I'm using uh, for. The stick blender. Now, if you haven't got a stick blender, like I would say if you've got a food processor or whatever you've got, you know, these stick, you've seen me use it before. I think they're about 25 bucks in Big W, Kmart, or whatever. They're not here, all right? They're not going to last forever. They're not like industrial ones, but um, they do the trick. So, there's my stick blender. There's my blending machine. I am actually going to do it in the wok. Uh, you, you probably could take it out if you're doing it on the stove you leave it in your saucepan uh, or you could take it out and put it in a bowl but the blades won't actually touch the bottom of the wok it actually draws the um draws the liquid in so we're just going to get the power you've got your two buttons here one for slow and you're just going to blend it in all you do with the stick blender is let it do the work you know Ooh, got covered then, by the way. <laughs> So that's our um, blending. I'm going to just put my heat back on, bring my soup back up to the boil. <clears throat> Give it a bit of a stir. Yeah, and because we've blended the mushrooms in now, it's got quite, quite a lot thicker, but I'm just going to reduce it down a bit now. So, um, got a nice colour. Nice aroma, lovely chef. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I know some of you think I'm mad. Well, you're quite right. I am. I am certified. Um, but um, I like a laugh. Life's too short not to have one. And being part of Men of Hope, you have to have a laugh. Don't you, Gerard? <laughs> or Mr. G, as I call him. And now all we're really waiting for is for the soup to come back up to the boil and simmer it a bit and we're waiting for for the um the cheese roll um i put garlic in that one today sometimes you can put mixed herbs in it uh but because you've got the um the savory thyme in the soup there's i don't think there, i think there'd be too much if you put the uh herbs in with the cheese you'd be you'd be herbed out you put like herb in it you'd be a vw anyway but um, so we're bringing this back up to the boil. Says he, it's not happening, but it is. Slowly, don't let it stick. Mm. And obviously as this comes back to the heat, it thickens up and that's the cream and the butter. Um, Beryl, if you wanted it thicker, there are several ways you can thicken uh, a sauce up. There's one you've seen me use before where I use corn flour. I blend the corn flour with some milk and some water. And you put it in corn flour being a starch, it thickens it up. You'll see a lot of chefs will make uh, will put a sauce and they'll add more butter 
but that's who we're taking it at. Sometimes Craig will take it at. Or what we used to do in the, in the commercial kitchens, you make a pot of roux. Now, roux is flour and butter, and it's melted together to form a paste. That's what it's based of a, of a sauce. You have a blonde roux, which is just cooked, that's for white sauces, and you have a brown roux, which is for gravies, like thick uh, brown sauces. And we used to have just have a pot of roux uh, ready there. And so we could just pick, uh, pick some up on our hand or spoon and throw it in the sauce and it would thicken up. But you've got to whisk it in, uh, otherwise it will go lumpy. So that, that's just a tip. Uh, if you're doing large scale kitchen, have a pot of roux. In, in, in your home, corn flour or, or some form, arrowroot, some form of starch, you know, but corn flour is probably the most, most popular. And, uh, and you use corn flour for a lot of other things as well. Um, you use it in Japanese batters, even, or even ordinary batter, you can use it. Uh, with the Japanese, they use egg, yolk, uh, egg whites and corn flour, and it makes it that uh, tempura batter, you know? So, um, yeah, so the old corn flour is a good one. <clears throat> so that's coming good now. And like I said, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've, we've been a host, uh, we've now sort of linked up to a lot of other, other groups now. Um, um, all, all, not all mental health, some of just physical and uh, well-being groups. But um, I think it's important, you know, if you go on the website, you can see what we do and you can see um, groups we connect with. And I think it's very important that you do that because, you know, my, mental health might not be for you. But there might be something we can refer you to, or especially Gerard, not myself, but I, I, I do the booking and, and help out here and there. But Gerard's the uh, administrator and he will put you in touch with the right people. So um, even if you just come on and go, oh, don't fancy me at home, what else can I do? There's other things out there. But I can assure you, I think once you've come to a men of hope group, you'll want to come more often. And uh, that's already been proved with some of the people we've got coming now. You know, they, they come, you know, they've been once, they've been told, or well, give it a go, and you can only give it a go. If you don't like it, don't come back. But they've, they've all come back. You know? So, um, and our, our ambition is, is eventually to expand. Um, it's not, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but we're hoping maybe, you know, Fremantle away from the southern area and maybe Curran Bar and a bit further north for that. But that, that's, that's a bit down the track because we've only just got going ourselves again. With the COVID and everything, so um, watch this space as they say, bringing that up to heat. And our next thing we really want to get going is um, our patch of hope, our garden. Do any gardeners out there if you want to come along and give us some tips, uh, you know, um, we'd, we'd look forward to it. You know, we basically want our garden to produce produce for our kitchen and cooking groups mainly herbs, herbs and edible flowers. I'm not really into potatoes and root vegetables, but things will grow fairly quick and will uh, re-establish themselves quick. You know, we're not farmers, you know, we just wanna, just wanna tinkle in the herb garden, you know. So that's coming to the wall, and now, let's have a look at these uh, uh, rolls in the oven, like the old iron side chair. Those rolls are coming on. There they're browning. Now, let's find something we're going to serve it in. We're going to have a nice plate. Oh, there. <clears throat> yeah, the way for the uh, rolls out of the uh, oven. And like I said, if, if anybody's got any recipes they want to share with us, or even come on, you know, if they want to, they can even come and show us on the show. 
they, if they if they're, if they're up to coming, just contact Gerard. He'll put you in touch with me. We'll arrange. We normally do it on a Thursday, as you know, between two and four. So if you fancy yourself as a bit of a celebrity, um, you know, come along and, and the show's yours. I've got one of those boxing gloves on a big pole, so if you overdo it, I think you're doing better than me, it'll just knock you out, okay? But, you know, please come along. Um, the more, the merrier. Right, let's have a look at these rolls. So we have our rolls. You can see how these rolls have turned out. They look a bit at the moment, but um, we'll see what we've done it. They look rustic. Look rustic, yeah. yeah rustic. I think I look rustic in the mornings as well. <laughs> Here we go. Um, <clears throat> turn this off. You know, if you haven't got a blender, as it was chunky, I would have eaten it like that without blending it. Just an animal. I know. <laughs> no, no, that is, that is that's so true. You know, you some people like it chunky. I like chunky. That's why I'm so popular. Mm. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being a bit chunky. <laughs> there we go. Now with the, so we've got the soup. So I'm going to put the paper on. I'll cut this roll in half. You can see the roll in half there, where the cheese is just melted in there. So you want that open like that. Beautiful. And if you wish, a little bit of cream just to finish off. And uh, there you go. You have, uh, I don't know if you can see that, can you? With the cream and shall your, we, and your we, um, can not lift it up anymore. So the the bowl. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. I think Jared can see that. Well, there you go, guys. That's um, a nice mushroom soup. If you want it thicker, just reduce the soup more, or like I said, use the starch. Thank you very much. Nice and simple. And we'll see you again for Zoom Thursday with Big Kid. Bye. Bye.